Hi guys, it's Uga and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be doing my favorite YA recommendations of all time till now. So basically I will talk about you about my favorite YAs. Some of them are on my favorite romance books because some of them are romance but I bring here some others that I didn't talk about on my channel. Some of them I already did but I didn't show you everything and let's start. Before I start the recommendation, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss another video from me and to help this project grow because yeah, it helps us a lot, especially small content creators. So thank you so much if you do it. And let's start with the recommendations. I want to start with a book that is a popular one in booktube, which is the Selection series by Kirekas. So we have Selection, The Elite and The One. I just have here the three ones because I haven't read the other ones, but the original trilogy is amazing. I really like it. Um, it's a very fast paced book. It's a very fast read. You can read it each book in a day, at least. Uh, we follow a dystopian world, a dystopian America in the future, where the America is not America anymore. It's Ilea and it's ruled by a king. The, there is a caste system and each time that the monarch wants to marry, he makes a selection. One girl from its district, for example, if it's a male or if he likes females, he goes to the royal palace and he makes like this bachelor party, like a bachelor program to see each one, which girl he will marry. We follow our main character, his name is America. She's, I think it's a five or six. I don't know. I think she's a five and it's connected to the musician, to the music and the arts, you know, she's a very talented singer. It's also a very talented musician and she's in love with a one a boy that is one cast below so she will decrease the cast because only men can increase the cast and when the selection comes out her mother says like if you apply i will give you start giving you money from your presentation like a small part because we still need the money we are very poor and she says okay and then she goes to the selection where she met the prince maxon and things start to happen it's a very good book it's a very interesting one it's a very captivating story america is very funny it's very sassy maxon is also a very kind heart although it's with a lot of cliches and uh she's traveling between two boys and then they have the other girls and then but then she starts having friendships um and then they start to arguing because of stupid things and then but then in Lee it's a very funny and a very cute story i really like the end i really like the books i reread them last year and i still enjoy them i think i wouldn't but i really do so this is my first recommendation of a youtube a booktube um favorite one and a one that is not very talked about and i really wanted to be talked about is night school by cj Daudry. so we have night school the legacy fracture resistance and end game this is a five book series i think she she's a german author and it's about how oh, she's named Ali and Ali is much more a troublemaker after her brother ran away from home or disappeared she starts to hang out with that person and her parents is like they are tired of that and they send her to a boarding school and a private one but when she arrives there she discovers that the boarding school is very much for an elite you have diplomat sons princes very rich people and she doesn't fit in and she's like very weird why do my parents have the possibilities or have the capability to enter in this. The school is named is Crimea. You don't allow to use cell phones or computer. And they are all very intelligent. She starts to make friends with the Carter, which is the, this uh, very mysterious boy. Uh, and then she learns the secret, which is the night school, which is like a secret society inside the school. And she joins in and then the book series come out. It's a, it doesn't have anything to do with fantasy. It's a very adventure and realistic story and we learn why Ali can go there, why Ali is important, what happened to his brother, what is behind that school, what's going to happen. It's a very action-packed story. I really liked it and it was my first English book ever read. So the first two books were translated in Portuguese. They never translate the rest and then I bought the rest in English and I read them and I enjoyed it. It was very hard at the beginning but since I know the story um, from 
well the first two it was very easy to go and i would rec totally recommend if you write a good adventure story with a very fun characters with a very dark plot uh, and a very like revenge and um, plan to end up the world and control this is the book for you totally now one of my favorite ya series by now it's the heartstopper by alice Osman. like i love this series i want to have them all like the drawing is just beautifully done it's like it's so cute the expressions and the text it's a very cute story so we follow charlie who came who is already out of the closet at school but he's very awkwardly socially and until he met nick who is a very he thinks straight boy and but nick, but charlie starts to have feelings and then um nick starts to have feelings too and they start to discover sexuality together and they start to understand one another and they have other things coming out on the later books and it's so good i really loved it and it's so cute and i see myself on those situations that's why i make it so real is that i pass through the same situations i pass through the same feelings i said i pass through the same issues in the same not problems but the same mindset and the same conflicts and the same heartwarming moments and it's so good and i totally recommend it absolutely i couldn't talk it about ya without conferring one of my favorite series um, of all time uh spoiler alert two of these authors are problematic and i i'll try to talk about them together so one of them is the harry potter series by the one we know who I don't like her disclaimer here. I don't believe what she believes, but I really like the Harry Potter series. I grew up watching the movies, playing the video games. I read the books and I love them in the more. I think the world is brilliant. And until now, I didn't found anything so similar. I think Mari and the Night Brothers might be. I'll try to read it next month. It's one of my reads. Uh, and they say it can be a replace for Harry Potter. Let's see. Um, but I really like the story. I think it's a very good world and uh, so magical and so captivating. And I really like it. If you want to read them, um, I advise you to buy it secondhand. Go on the internet, you know, um, try not supporting the author. It's very easy. Um, nowadays, you just don't have to give them money. Another book from another problematic author, I think, because she has one book with problematic content inside of about her Asian representation, but I really like this one, is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Um, Carry On is much uh, a ripoff, more or less, of the Harry Potter series. We have um, Simon Snow, who is a magician, but it's unlike the others, he's the chosen one, but is also very bad at magic and it has his arc enemy i think they are roommates which is which is baz and baz has some some secrets that you will find it in the book we have simon's best friend which is penelope uh, the magic system here is interesting because it works with popular phrases the more the popular the, the more popular the phrase is, the more stronger is the spell. Some, that's why, for example, some phrases from Shakespeare are, are still so stronger, and some old phrases that lost power, so the magic is always evolving, the spells. For example, there is one that is, uh, can't touch this, no, 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 but from this, and this is a so popular, it's a very powerful spell. Uh, and it goes from pop culture references, that's why the magicians need the human kind but here the bad guy is absorbing the magic and is destroying the magic world and simon has to destroy it but there has twists and turns i love this book i was obsessed i was taking it to the bathroom while i was doing my master thesis because i wanted to continue reading i couldn't stop i really like the characters i really love the story i really like the magic system the second one is a very may I think this could be very much a standalone if you want. You can read like it's a standalone and it will be great as it is. Um, I still want to pick, I still add the third coming up. So I'll see the third one and I see if it's worth it or if it's just as second is a book, middle book syndrome or not. But definitely this can be a standalone if you want it. I think this one is on my favorite YA fantasies. 
Uh, my favorite YA romances and it's What If It's Us by Becky Albertelli and Adam Silvera. It's about two boys who met in New York by chance and then they spend some time trying to find one another and then when they finally start building a relationship although they know that by the end of the summer they will separate and it's a very cute, it's a very good story. I just want it to be a little bit more, there's a hint of HGH ADHD and they talk about it but they don't talk that much and they didn't explain anything there are some points that I feel like it doesn't make sense how it is because some plot some there is some contradictions and some points that I feel like people won't react like that but overall it's a very good book there is a sequel coming out this year um I don't know the title now here to us I don't know I'll put here the cover too but it's a very good YA story. I think it's a very cute story. Um, I like the concept. I like the idea. I like the characters. Um, I like the struggles. I like. I think some moments are very real and very good and very cute. And I really enjoy them. This one was a book that I read this year. And it's Down Comes the Night by Alison Shaft. It's a very good fantasy, snow-setting, gothic vibes. We have Anne Catherine Wren. And she's a healer on the army. Um, she basically can, uh, each person can have different types of magic. Someone can grow the bones uh, weaker or stronger uh, or change some abilities. She has the ability to heal. But this magic healing is also connected with science. So it's a very science uh, book also. I really like that. And after some mistakes that she did in the army, she is dispensed. But then when the Lord says, um, I have some here... Uh, a disease patient um, that it needs your help. If you help me, I will make like a treat to help your kingdom because he, he's from another kingdom, or in this case, a queendom because Ren uh, is a queen. So the queendom and the kingdom. And she's like, hey, if I do this, um, everyone is starting to respect me, you know. Um, and she goes and then she finds out that the man she's supposed to heal is the enemy of the state and then she's like oh I'm gonna like be in jail but I can also deliver them or and then they start falling in love it's very good and I love how the relationship is a burn it's a very slow burn romance um, a little bit enemies to lovers how the setting the setting is very gothic with snow and gloomy and the science part and then the treasons and the end the twists and turns everything ah oh, it's so good I loved it and I'm really excited for Alison Shaftness book I already have an arc on it Kali but definitely this one is so good and if you're looking for a snow uh snow setting or a gothic one for now the months after august it's a very good one now from contemporary and fantasy or fantasy i have some what's what sci-fi dystopian one that i really like that is the girl with all the gifts by m r carey this is a dystopian world where the human race is much more like almost exterminated and we follow melanie which is a very special girl uh, she has 10 years and she really likes to go to to learn new things. She's very intelligent and she really likes her professor and talk with her about things that she's going to do when she grows up. But we know by the synopsis that each time that she has to go to school, she has to go handcuffed with things around her mouth because they are basically zombies. Yes intelligent zombies and will this is the story about her and how she tries to help the humankind also she learns about herself about her species um, there is a there is a movie with Glenn Close also but I really liked this one it was my first interaction with zombies in science fiction and I really was captivating about this one like everything um, that science puts here with the doctor that is investigating what is happening to the people and what it's turning them into zombies and how everything goes and how it ends it's uh, it's very good i really really enjoy that good i know there is a sequel i haven't picked it up because i didn't feel the need to have a sequel you know um i think how it ends um um how it ends, it's, it's enough to know how this is going to end and how this story is going to progress. You don't need anything more. 
and yeah, if you're looking for a YA sci-fi dystopian world this is a perfect book for you if you haven't picked it up it's a very good story I have your one that is a contemporary and I read it years ago and then the Netflix movie came out I was a bit disappointed not as good as the book and I'm talking about um, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven and this is the, um, the story about Violet she's in a depression and she is um, she wants to high school to end to run away because her sister died on a car accident and we have Theodore Flinch who is a very problematic and strange boy who is obsessed with his own death and and he suffers with very profound depression and he thinks on killing himself every day and one day he finds off Violet on the top roof of the school uh, he talks her out because she, he she was trying to kill herself and then they have an excitement on 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 school that is finding important places or sorry or uh, hide sites on the, the state that they live and they by then they will forge a friendship and most more but then depression tackles again it's a very emotive book it's a very important book for talking about mental health. I think it was my first book, young adult, that talked about mental health the way it did. Um, I don't know if it's like the best way it represented, but I think it represents very well the stage of depression and how people deal with it and deal with grief. I really like that part and I really, really enjoy this one. and. It's it's very good and I, I don't know, I don't want to spoil it, but it's very good and it's very heartbreaking, but at the same time, so full of hope and what could happen next. Now, I have here a trilogy of fantasy that is, has now six books that I haven't read on all. And is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and then comes the Library of Souls. No, The Hollow City, which is Volume 2, and then Library of Souls is Volume 3. And this is the original trilogy from Ressam Riggs. And it's about Jacob, who is a 16-year-old boy, that after his grandfather is killed, um, he has a, like, a psychiatrist, and then he goes to a trip to Ireland, I think. He goes to a place where his grandfather was during the World War II, and then he met Discus. They, they live in on a time loop with Miss Peregrine and they are peculiar. You have someone who has a mouth in the head, you have someone who splits fire, someone who is very light that floats. You know, you have a very different children. A little bit like what um, House in the Australian Sea had in children, they had it here. Um, someone who is very strong. They are, they are hiding because there are some creatures that I think they are invisible for them. They, they attack and kill them to gain, like, if they kill enough, they start having human and then they can change highs. It's something like that. I don't recall all the, all the pork points, but Jacob can see them and then they start to help them. I know in the first one, they ended up going to an, a very good adventure to the second one and the third one. It's a very good book. The lore is amazing. The plot points and the characters and everything, it's so good connected. And the way it ended the third one and now the new series, I don't know how it's going to be. I haven't read them and I don't know what they are about, but I really like the original story. You know, this is full of adventures. You have always the same kids. Um, going from different places, they travel through time. They were trying to find other other piece, other persons. It's very good, and the end, it's like ah, so good. This action, it's amazing. I really like it, and I really recommend it for our, for a quick trilogy. They are not so big, and full of images. It has a lot of photographs. It's very good for you. Now, one of my first English series that I've read ever was the Miss, the Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Female, Michael, Michael Scott. So we have the Alchemist, the Magician, the Sorcerer, the Necromancer, the Warlock, the Enchantress. This is a six book series, okay? And it follows Josh and Sophie Newman. They are working on the summer. Sophie, I think, is in a coffee shop and Josh is on a bookshop. <clears throat> and the owner of the bookshop is not the less than Nicholas Hamel, but they don't know. But when John D, the physician of Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth I, 
comes up and attack this the this the bookshop with golems they discover that it's stole i think it's called the codex special book that has a, like a lot of power and it has also the potion that pr allows nicholas flamel and the, her her wife and his wife Paranel to live forever each cycle of the of the full moon so they have like one cycle to find out it's a very fast pacing book the magic system is based on elements so you have elemental magic but it has a lot of mythological creatures you have a lot of um greek myths greek gods egyptian gods north gods you have like uh, also um american folklore you have um historical figures you have mythical animals like sphinx ghosts ghouls you have all of that and if you like that it's amazing the last book is like what the hell and then when everything starts to pulling up together it's like oh okay it's an amazing journey i really liked it uh, it's very easy to read the books start to get a little bit heavier to the end um, but it's definitely a good series if you like magic, if you like this type of stories of adventure, trying to recover evil, you have here betrayals, you have here a love, you have here everything, and it's so good. I really want to reread them soon because I want to bring my full opinion on this for you to know what these books are about and what it's uh, all this series about. Uh, time for the last one. Uh. Yes. This is all a book series that I will recommend. Will be no surprise for anyone if I talk about this. Let me just... Uh, okay. Okay. The book series that I will last week recommend for you is The House of Night series by PC Casting Grayson Cast. I will show you my old Portuguese edition, so be ready. So we have Marked, Betray, Chosen, Untamed, Hunted, Seduced, Burn, Awaken, Destiny, Hidden, Revealed, and the last one is Redempt. This is an original 12 volume series, but you also have the Friendling Handbook 101, which is um, basically is if you were like a student and it was your teach book. For example, it teach here the story about um, how the first vampire of each element was born, and um, some sacred some rituals how is the symbols work what is work classes which warrior element it's a very good book and it's a very beautiful one it has like beautiful illustrations like this is cleopatra uh, she was like the first vampire in the circle of alexandria she was considered the power of fire you have here the one from water like beautiful illustrations and I really loved it. And then you have the short stories, which I'm missing one. This is the Dragon Oath, which is so the story behind Dragon and Anastasia story. And you have Nefret's Curse, the story about Nefret and how she was before she was a vampire. <sighs> this is a 12 book series, as you could see, with three short, four short novels and one friendling book about vampires. In our world, vampires exist in this world, in this case, and they live in society. Each time, the vampires are not born, not beaten, they are marked. They, are, they, they worship a goddess, the goddess of the vampires, and it, which is Nyx, goddess Greek of the night. And she has like hunters that track people who will be vampires, and they mark you. After you're marked, you have to go to the House of Nights, because you need to be surrounded by full-grown vampires and learn about being a vampire, study and everything. But this is not one journey. At any time you can die because your body will reject the change or can reject the change. If that happens, there is no way back. So it can happen in your first day, it can happen in your last day before you become a full-grown vampire. Nobody knows what happened. Our main protagonist is Roy, Zoe Redbird. She's um, a normal kid in school uh, and she has some problems in home and she's marked. After she's marked, she has to run away because her family believes that they can heal her with praise. Why there's always this in books? Uh, and she, when she runs away from her mother and stepfather to her grandmother house, which uh, is who is Cherokee, she falls and meets Nyx and Nyx made us see that she's special her mark is different from the others and then comes the journey 
Zoe Redbird is destined to many things. The book it takes a lot of twists and turns. You're gonna miss meet different vampires with different techniques, with different powers, with a lot of magics. Who can see the future? Who can send the death? Who can control elements? It's amazing. You have rituals. You have fallen angels. You have immortals. You have crows. You have bulls. You have everything. The series is amazing. It's very good. It's very dragging. I think the last books uh, could be a little condensed. Nowadays, if you read it all together, there ought to be a lot of recaps that happen also with uh, Vampire Academy because these books were written with a lot of time between them. So the author did recaps. Nowadays, I don't think they will do recaps anymore. But it's a very good series. A very entertaining one. You have to remember this was written like in 2008. So... Some of the words are a little weird. I know someone already said that, uh, my friend on UK who complained about that. But it's a very fun story. The characters are likable. Even the ones you're supposed to hate, you like them because of that. It's amazing. I love it. And I, wow, it's my favorite series of all time. So guys, I hope you guys enjoy my suggestions of YA books. Tell me in the comments which are your favorite YA books, which are your favorites that you will recommend to anyone. I want to know them if I have. To see if I have read them or not, or to see if I will read them. Um, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you've done already. And I, I post videos every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye.